In a perfect world, you'd perform all your backups between the same systems, TrueNAS to TrueNAS, Synology to Synology, Unraid to Unraid, but this isn't the perfect world. This is the real world. And if you're anything like me, you have mismatched systems. So today we are going to look at how to perform an R-Sync backup from a TrueNAS system to a Synology system. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in our Synology system. You'll wanna have both that and your TrueNAS system up. It just makes it easier to follow along, but we're gonna start here in Synology. The first thing you're actually going to want to do is make sure that you have a location set for where your backups are going to go. So on here, I've just created a folder called backups. And in there, I have my Epic folder, which is the one I'm currently using, but Let's go ahead and create a new one so that we can step through the entire process. So we're gonna to go to create folder. We'll call this one Epic 2. Yeah, I'm very creative. Okay, our location is set. Just make sure you know where that is for when we set up our rsync task later. All right, next we are going to create our user. So go into control panel, down to user and group. And you can see we already have an rsync user here, which is the name of the one you'll want to create, but Again, we are doing this all over again. So let's just create another one. rsync2, look at that. Give it a password. There we go. Leave the groups default. Now, when you go into here, you're going to wanna make sure that this user has access to that location where you're going to be saving your backups. Now, remember ours was in backups. So we are going to give it read, write access, then hit next. Now we are not gonna set any user quotas, so we can skip that. Now in here is where you're going to assign permissions based on the application. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is go down and set rsync to allow. If rsync isn't here, uh, once we turn it on, I already have it turned on because I'm using it, but um, if it's not there, once you turn it on, go back in and make sure this is allowed. We're also going to check FTP and SFTP. Hit next. We're not gonna set any speed limits. You can do that if you want, I am not. And hit done. So now we are going to want to actually enable rsync on Synology. So go into file services, go over here to rsync, and you can see that I've already enabled it because I'm actively using it, but you're gonna wanna check this box and then enable rsync account. Okay, to make sure everything is set up, go into shared folder and go to the folder where you're going to save your backups. So again, remember I'm using backups. Click edit up here. Go over to permissions and make sure that rsync or rsync2, whatever you named it, has read write access. We do, we're good. And the last thing you want to do is go into user and group, go over to advanced and make sure that this enable user home service is checked. And now we're pretty much done with the Synology GUI. The next thing you'll want to do is actually SSH into the Synology system using that rsync account. All right, we are getting a permission denied. That means that we missed some type of permission settings. Let's go back and find out what we missed. Okay, I just remembered something about the Synology ecosystem. So first of all, make sure when you go into terminal and SMP in the control panel that enable SSH service is checked so that you at least have SSH. And one thing you'll see up here is that SSH slash Telnet only supports logins from accounts belonging to the administrator's group. So I bet you can guess where we messed up. Go into user and group, go into groups, administrators, edit, members, and you will see that, yep, rsync2 is not a member. So we're going to add it and hit save. All right, now we are going to try to log in again. Bada bing, bada boom, we are in. So what we're gonna to wanna to do in here is modify our sshd config file. So to do that, we are going to use vim. Don't be scared. You only have to use like two commands. We're going to do sudo vi etc slash ssh slash s s. All right, just read what I have on the screen. Hit enter. It's going to say, yeah, we trust that uh, you know what you're doing here. Uh, just enter your password. Wrong of them to trust me, honestly. All right, so once we're in here, we are going to want to make two changes. The first one is that we wanna set the pub key authentication to yes. So scroll down to where you see it. Mine has already been changed, but you're going to wanna make sure yours looks like this. And to edit it, hit I on your keyboard. Now you are in insert mode. You can go in and edit it to your heart's content. So just make sure that 
Hubkey authentication is set to yes. The other thing we want to change is to make sure that this authorized keys file is set to .ssh slash authorized keys. Once we've made both of those changes, hit escape, then hit colon WQ, enter, and then you will save it. And now the file is updated. So now what we wanna do is actually create that location. So we are going to CD into the following location, bar, services, homes, and then the name of the user, which is rsync2. Then we want to make the directory called .ssh. We're gonna modify the permissions on it, using the code 700. Then we are going to create the authorized key file. Do that with touch.ssh slash authorized underscore keys. So if we check what's in the SSH folder, you can see we have that file now. Then we're going to go up one spot and modify the permissions on this directory with code 700 and rsync2. Okay, we are done with this for now. Go back into your Synology UI. I know I said we were done, I lied. Toggle this enable, hit apply, then toggle it back and hit apply. All right, now let's dive into TrueNAS. Okay, we are logged into TrueNAS over here. I am using Core. The steps, if you're using Scale, are going to be relatively the same. So the first step that I take isn't really necessary, but what I like to do is create a home directory for my user. So going into the shell, I'll navigate to the location where I want it, which is on my big boy pool, and then I will check what's in there. Okay, we have a home directory. So let's navigate into there. And if I check again, you'll see we have an rsync folder, but again, we're doing this with rsync2. I'm gonna create a directory, rsync2, and that's pretty much it. You'll see why in a second. Okay, now we have to create the user. Go into accounts, users. Here you can see my rsync user that I've already created, but we don't care about that one. We wanna add a new one. So a full name, whatever you wanna call it. The username is going to be rsync2. Make sure that it matches the one on Synology. Password, whatever you want it to be. Auxiliary groups, make sure it's part of a group that has access to that file location that you want to read from. So the SMB user group that I've created has access to the folders that I wanna take from Synology or from TrueNAS and back up to Synology. And home directory, this is why we created that location before. So remember it was in Mount, big boy, um, rsync2. SSH public key, we will need this later. For now, you can leave this to blank. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add this in a bit. And then hit submit. So what we're gonna do is SSH into our TrueNAS box and create that SSH key. So similar how we did it to Synology, SSH rsync2. All right, so all we're going to run is SSH keygen. It's going to use the default home directory as its base location. You can just hit enter, no passphrase, nope. So to obtain that, we are going to read the public key file that it created. We'll do that with cat.ssh id underscore rsa dot pub. I'm probably blurring out some of this, but you're going to want to take this entire string that it outputs, copy it, then go back into TrueNAS, Go into your user, edit, and here is where you will paste that public key, just like that, and then hit save. So the last step to finish up all of this user permission stuff is to go back into your Synology system. Looks like I've been kicked out, so SSH back in. And then we want to copy that same SSH public key into the authorized keys location. So again, we are going to use Vim. We are going to do vi.ssh slash authorized keys. And you can see there is nothing in there. Again, hit I for insert mode, right click to paste or whatever operating system you're on, you're going to paste into here, escape, colon, WQ, and boom, it is saved in there. So to test this out to make sure it's actually working, what we can do is go back into our TrueNAS system over here, clear it out, and what this should allow us to do is SSH into our Synology system from our TrueNAS system without having to use a password, which is why we set this all up. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but setting up an SSH key means that we can do an rsync export 
without having to set a password. All right, so let's see if we can SSH into our Synology system from our TrueNest system. Yes. And look at that, no password needed. We are logged into our Synology system from our TrueNest system. So everything works. Okay, we are heard done with all the SSH stuff. You can close this out. And the last step is to actually create the rsync task. Go over here into tasks, rsync tasks. You can see I already have one. Let's take a look at that to see how my existing one is actually set up. So you can see I've specified a source that I want to read from. I've specified the user that I want to use. I want to push it. I want to do it daily at midnight. I want to send it to this IP, which is my Synology system, using SSH on port 22, specifying a remote path, and then some parameters. So really not much you have to do here. Let's go ahead and create a new one. So we'll click add, and let's say we want to copy from, I don't know, um, how about what's something that doesn't have a whole lot of stuff in it? Uh, videos, we'll do uh, my YouTube folder and we'll do the common folder. There's not too much in there. User we wanna use is going to be our rsync2 user. Direction is going to be a push. We'll do this the same, I guess, daily. You can set it to whatever you want, honestly. And then the remote host was 10.0.0.82. Now we're not using rsync modules. You can't really do that if you're writing to a Synology system. I wish they would add that feature, but uh, that's why we are using SSH. Port 22, that never changed, and the remote path. So on Synology, by default, everything in your file station is under technically volume one, which is kind of confusing because that's not really listed anywhere but that is just the you know, syntax that Synology uses. So we are in folder backups, then Epic 2. So if we go back here, it's actually going to be volume one backups, Epic 2. Kind of confusing. Down here is where you can specify the settings. We are going to wanna to leave it to compress. And down here we have the settings. You can kind of click through here and see what each of them do. I've seen people have issues when leaving this compressed checked, so we're going to uncheck it. You can try it on yours if you want to. The other one I have checked is delete. So what this does is deletes files in the destination directory that do not exist in the source, meaning that if I delete something on TrueNAS, it is going to delete it on Synology. If you don't want that functionality, then leave this unchecked, but yeah, that's, that's what I want. And hit submit. It is pending. We can actually run this now to test it out. And apparently it's already done. So let's go over to our Synology system, go into Epic 2, and just like that, there's all of my files. Very cool, I actively use this to make sure that my current edit folder is always backed up at least once a day, and it is. This is really cool, a really useful feature if you're in my scenario where you have a true NAS directory that you wanna back up to a Synology system, with rsync. Now, if you wanna go the other way, it's honestly a little bit easier because then you can go in and use something called hyper backup. If you open that, you can see that you can write to an rsync directory. It makes it so much easier. You can specify the IP, you can specify the port, username, password, all of that, and just send your stuff using rsync to another location. But as you can tell by this tutorial, it is much more difficult to use rsync from a location to a Synology system, but we did it, we set it up, it works. If this worked for you, that's awesome. Be sure to drop a like below if you liked the video. Subscribe if you wanna see more of my stuff and I will see you guys next one.